Hey everyone and welcome to my channel and to this video. Today we will be painting a beautiful yellowish sunset in the background and a dark and some weeds and sedge in the foreground. All the materials I will be using in this video for this painting are listed down in the description box, so feel free to check it out. Also, I wanted to say that I've provided for you a free sketch that you can download and also the link for that sketch you can find in the description. I'm starting off with pre-wetting the paper, entire paper, and then using a larger round brush to paint in the sky. And we will be painting sky in two layers and for the first one we're just painting the lower and upper part a little bit darker and the middle part a little bit lighter. And one part of the sky I'm leaving completely white because I want to make an impression that there is sun and glowiness from the sun, so that part will be left white. And for the sky you can actually use some yellow, deeper yellow color and some orangey colors. Now I'm using a tissue paper to pick up a little bit of the paint around that white area because I do want sun going through the clouds and showing itself through. And since I'm not really making a cloud shapes, I've just flattened completely my tissue paper and just with the top of it, with that thin line, I'm just picking up the paint. Afterwards, I'm just smudging the part around the horizon line and letting the paint bleed slightly into the lower part into my water. I will be painting the water with the same colors as I did paint the sky, some darker yellow, raw sienna and golden deep. The water I won't be painting in a one same similar wash, but just also I will be leaving some parts of the water white, making the reflection from the sun. After the paint completely dries, I will be moving on to my second layer for the sky and this time I'm using the mix of ultramarine and mother lake red light to get that a little bit violet color and I'm not really using it a lot of saturated, I'm using quite amount of water because I do want it to be light and a bit transparent. So I'm just switching in between two brushes, one smaller one, round smaller one and round bigger one and with the smaller brush I'm adding a little bit of the paint and with a bigger brush I'm just smudging the paint beneath the line because I don't want a harsh line I do want it to bleed a little bit into my sky and to make the line like there is some fogginess in the distance. I'm also using a tissue paper to pick up the excess water because I don't want when it dries to leave that ugly markings from the water. Afterwards, I'm just painting in some clouds and also using a mix of ultramarine and mother lake red light for some of them and for some clouds I'm using that golden deep and that part of the sky I did not pre-wet, I'm painting it actually almost dry on dry because I'm not even having a little bit, uh, I'm not even having a lot of water in my brush but just a little bit and also in my paint, so I'm just rubbing the tip of my brush on paper and in that way painting, painting those clouds. I'm now again moving on to the second layer for my water and first I'm pre-wetting the paper and afterwards again using that mix of ultramarine and mother lake red light, that violet color, to paint in some impressions of the waves and movement in the water. For the part of the water that is further away from us and nearer to the horizon line, I'm using golden deep but just a little bit more saturated than the water itself is. 
Now when the paint completely dried again, I'm painting in the dark and I'm actually preventing it, but this time I decided to add a little bit of the pigment to my brush, to my water, and that is just a light wash of that mix of ultramarine and Mother Lake Red Light, and I've just prevented the entire dock with that paint, and later on I'm adding, I added a little bit of sepia into that mix, and I'm just now painting some variety in that dock. Also adding a little bit of golden deep and then only some ultramarine. Because you know, when you're painting in the wood, wood has a lot of different textures and a lot of different colors, discoloration, maybe it was painted once, in a once at a time and the paint just faded away. So I'm adding a lot of colors because I do believe that it makes it a little bit more believable, but just adding those varieties to it. And then I'm using a smaller round brush to paint in the the part between those darker, there would be actually shadows between those boards on the dock and with a dry brush and just a little bit of the paint in it, I'm adding some texture to the wood. Also later on I'll, I will be adding some texture with a script brush and mostly I will be painting dry on dry using a dry brushing technique to paint in those wood textures. There is one more thing that I want to mention and that is that, you know, a lot of you have asked me what colors do I use and what colors could, can you use if you're not using, this, if you don't have the same colors as I do. So I've actually made a video on that and you can check that video, I will link it down in the description box and you can see there my advice and well how would I would recommend for you to choose your colors if you want your colors to be similar or as same as possible as mine you know i would say first you don't have to you can use any colors you like your sky here doesn't have to be yellowish your sky here can be bluish that's fine you know you can do whatever you want and use whatever colors you want but if you're not sure and you don't want to think about the colors and the way you can choose your colors and make it as similar as possible as mine is the way that i've shown and explained in that video so i will link it down in the description box and you can check it out maybe it will just help you when picking up your colors and paints. On the left side I will be painting those weeds and sedge and I'm starting off with a again dry brushing technique and I'm just painting in the background the part that will actually add a little bit more of the depth to my weeds and as mentioned earlier now I'm using a script brush to add that wood texture to my boards. Instead of script brush, you can use any detail brush, liner brush, maybe even a smaller round brush with quite pointy tip. You can work on your wood texture as much as you want, add as many layers as you like and you know when you finish with those lines you can add a little bit more paint and then again lines and then again paint going in between the boards just as much as you like 
and you know that will just give more believability to your dog and you know my dog at the end does look a little bit cartoony I would say it's not perfectly realistic you know but I wasn't really actually going for such perfect realistic look but if you want your dog to be more realistic if you want it to be to look deeper to look um, well to have more depth in it and more believability just add as many layers as you like and when you like it when you think it is finished it does look finished you can just stop also one more thing that i would like to warn you about is that well i actually might made my sketch pretty light and when i've painted the first layer the first wash i've actually lost my lines and i couldn't see them anymore so i was just painting those boards blindly I would say and well my advice to you is to paint this sketch quite dark you know because it won't be visible it won't be shown you will do you will do a lot of layers you will use dark enough colors so I don't think you should be worried about the fact that your pencil marks will show through so just make your sketch dark enough that it won't disappear that it won't just you know be not visible anymore when you do your first layer and for the weeds and sedge i'm just using first i used a smaller round brush and painted those leafy leafy looking weeds and then i've used a script brush to paint in those taller weeds Also with the side of my brush I'm adding a little bit more of the paint to the lower part well just to blend in my weeds to the background and you could have seen I have did a little bit of sprinkling you know me and sprinkling you can finish your painting without sprinkling and the last thing I'm doing to my boards and my dog is adding a little bit of shadows to the top part of the boards. After painting some more of the textures and waves to my water, I thought I was finished with my painting, but then later on I was just some missing something in the sky, so I decided to paint those three little birdies. And with that, well, I'll be finishing off this painting and of course this video. Thank you guys a lot for watching, for sticking till the end. And if you do like this video, please hit the like, comment, share it. And if you haven't still, please subscribe to my channel. It would really mean a lot to me. And well, without further ado, I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.